Good evening, I'm Dan Kleckner. I'm Stephanie Vigil. This evening, we're breaking away from our traditional 6 p.m. newscast format. Yeah, it was just 24 hours ago. I sat down with someone who I think we can say is a beloved member of our community and someone who both Dan and I know very well, Mark Rippon. It was a raw and intense hours-long interview as Mark revealed how he believes mental illness has caused his life to unravel, taking him to some very dark places, including thoughts of taking his own life. In this next hour, you're going to hear that conversation as well as learn about treatments, what local schools are doing in a town hall meeting happening as we speak. It's a very important hour for our community. We hope you'll stay with us. Right now on Q6. This is KHQ Local News at 6. He's a hometown hero who made it to the big leagues. Mark Rippon was a star quarterback at Shadow Park High School, WSU, and ultimately played his way to the Super Bowl, leading the Redskins to a win over Buffalo in Super Bowl 26 and earning an MVP on the way. But Mark has suffered a significant loss. The death of his three-year-old son, Andrew, to cancer may have been by far his biggest blow, but repeated beatings on the field is the battle he says he's fighting now. And he says the impact has been life altering. Now he says he's ready to reveal the demons he's been confronting. I don't want to be, I don't want to be another statistic. You know, Mark, I was thinking back the other day. I think we have been friends for almost two decades now. I know that neither of us thought that today, fast forward, we would be sitting here um, having a conversation about a very personal side of your life, but you're ready to tell a story, and I'm here to listen. Thank you. First of all, um, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to my community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, first, our community's in a crisis, and uh, we need some healing in our community, and I want to bring some light to that healing. I, myself, personally, am going through some uh, mental health uh, issues, and I think it's important to uh, look at these and bring some awareness to this and uh, stop the stigma. Mark, how long have you been dealing with mental illness? Um, first of all, I like, I'd like to um, uh, define mental illness. Mental illness is not a choice, it's not a decision. Uh, mental illness is a disorder. Um, I know that because I've played 26 years of uh, organized football, junior high, all the way through my, my retirement in the National Football League. I um, suffer uh, from a, a complex stew of mental health conditions, dark places, depression, anxiety, um, addictions, uh, poor choices, poor decisions, brought about from uh, dozens of concussions and dozens of, and, and thousands of sub-concussive injuries from playing uh, this sport. Um, it's important to know what a concussion is. Um, if I can use a, a bowl of jello, uh, you know, we've all kind of wiggled a bowl of jello back and forth. And if you think about it, when you wiggle the jello, it hits the wall and the bowl on this side, hits the wall and the bowl on that side, and vice versa. Think of that as your brain. My post football career is, I think, where most of these d depression, anxiety, um, addictions, poor choices, poor decisions have really come into into focus and I'm, and I'm addressing those so I can talk to those people in our community that are going through the same. What are these days like for you right now? I suffer every day. I suffer depression, anxiety. I suffer uh, isolation. Um, I suffer, uh, you know, it's, it's in a social environment I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get home and, and just be alone. And I've never known you to be anything more than jovial. I've seen you in many, many situations. Never have I seen you uh, out of control, anything like that. You know, so there is that side of Mark Rippon that's larger than life, right? And then there's a side that sits with me today. I mean, clearly this is a side I have never seen because you are broken right now. I'm, I'm, I'm telling my story, Steph, and I want people to hear my story because I want other kids out there to tell their story. And silence is a, is a, is a killer. And um, I don't want to be another statistic. <laughs> I've, uh, I attempted suicide. I, 
and I took on 150 pills with a bottle of, 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 of booze. And if it wasn't for my wife coming home and finding me on the floor and shoving hydrogen peroxide down my throat and charcoal to throw up all these pills, I wouldn't be here today. Danielle is Mark's wife. She stood by his side for the past 16 years. But last November, domestic abuse and assault allegations were filed, then later dropped. Tell me what happened last November. Well, I've been... Uh, medication is, is uh, um, something that we've been working with to try to get a, a better sense. I have mood swings, rage, um, impulse control. Mark's response started to become disjointed. So there's a lot of things in my life I wish were different. I wish there was a time where I was able to, to think more reasonably. And I think that uh, I have found a, a place with my medication anyway that gets me to think a little clearer and a little bit more um, under control. Do you remember that night? No. I, I remembered. I, I don't remember that night, no. I remember losing my, losing control is all I do. So it really wasn't Danielle? No. We're here today to shake the stigma, but a lot of that is really coming clean with some of the things that have happened. And so can you tell me a little bit about some of the dark places that you've been heading down because um, you have impulse control or lack of it. I, I can tell you, I've, I've, I've been uh, down dark places. I've made some poor decisions. Um, I've made some poor choices. Um, and I've turned those things around. Throughout our conversation, Mark referred several times to poor decisions and choices, but wouldn't be too specific. One area I did press was persistent rumors that a plague mark surrounding a 2012 prostitution sting in Spokane. Several sources have confirmed to KHQ that Mark Rippon was involved, although to be clear, his name never appeared on any list. I asked him about this. Did you frequent the Asian spas that were shut down? Again, I made poor decisions. I made poor choices. What I've done is, is in my life, is I've stumbled. I've, I've even fallen. I've tried, and what I'm doing is turning these stumbling blocks into stepping stones, turning around something negative and turning it positive. And that's kind of why I'm here. I'm not saying I didn't make any mistakes. I did not say I make any poor decisions. But I want to help in the mental help and the mental illness that our community is going through and the crisis that we're going through here today. Is I think some imperative. of that, though, too, is taking ownership. Even though those bad choices happened, they didn't just happen to you. They happened to other people as well. And that's why I'm feeling if we address this, then it's no longer under a rock. Uh, again, I, I, may, I have made poor choices and poor decisions. I'm, I'm, I've turned my life around. I've, I've come here to, to help others, and I'll do everything I can to help others. And part of those things are, are, are transitioning through these uh, stumbling blocks and turning them into something positive. Am I to take that as a yes? I made poor decisions. Were any of those women underage? To my knowledge, in all the years that I've been here, I've, I've never been uh, with an underage woman at any time. Having this out, is there anything that you would like to say, you know, following up to the community in response to this? Um. I, w I would just like to say what my message and, and what I wanted to bring awareness to is, is mental health. Um, and amidst the crisis that we have going on here 
and the issues that I am going through and continue to go through and the help and the recovery that I get, uh, I want to bring awareness to that. Uh, I want to be able to leave a legacy yeah. that says, hey, football is football. Super Bowl rings, I don't want that to define me. The darkest of times that I went through post-football and my struggles that I've went through and go through, I don't want that to define me. I want to define me and the legacy that I want to leave is to be able to start a movement. You'll learn through this hour what that movement means to Mark and how a local organization becomes the focus. You'll also learn why Mark is choosing to talk now. What does that look like for an 18 year old boy? He's coming out and saying there's help. There's help out there. I can get help. We can find ways to get them help. What does it feel like when you communicate? How he feels about the NFL. And I truly believe they're going to tie things up in court until people die. How does he feel about his daughter playing the sport? Angela Rippin can throw as good as her dad. Mark Rippin out of the shadows when this special edition of KHQ Local News at 6 returns. Mark Rippin, hometown hero famous for his success on the football field from highs to incredible lows mark sat down with me ready to publicly reveal the battle he's faced privately mental illness my post football career Do you know the condition of your brain right now it, it's not a normal brain that's what they've told me mm -hmm. um, i've got psychologists i work with psychiatrists i work with medications that i take we've got a full neurological scan um, and again, these, what they're, the scans they're looking at are, are not normal scans. Mark Rippon, like many former football players, has dealt with brain injuries. In some cases, it's been determined that they have CTE, short for chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a progressive degenerative disease of the brain, often found in athletes after repeated trauma. The problem with diagnosing CTE is that right now it can only be done after death. Would you be willing to donate your brain to, um, to actually have it looked at? Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about CTE. I'm going to list some things and you tell me yes or no. Right now, as of yet, um, they cannot diagnose CTE wow. in a living human being. I have to be dead and they really can't get an answer from someone. Like to take a look at you? Take like a, they, 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 they take an autopsy, out. like Mike Webster. Mm -hmm. Like um, Junior Seau. Brain injury? Yes. So. Confusion? Yes. How often? Oh, I'd say, I'd say daily. Impaired judgment? Absolutely. Impulse control problems? Yes. When we say that, like, how often are your thoughts uncontrolled? I go from uh, zero to 60, sometimes very quick. Do you feel like your treatment is going well? Um, yes, I do. I, I figure, I feel that these professionals have uh, got me stabilized. Um, they've got me turned the corner. Um, and they've, they've given me uh, the tools necessary uh, to live my life in a way uh, that helps others and in encourages others and um, stays away from the, uh, the, ch the choices and decisions I make. In 2013, a settlement was reached with the NFL in a concussion lawsuit. Mark was the lead plaintiff. Back then, he called it a, quote, great day because former football players could get neurological help. I know that you had to go through the um, lawsuit with the NFL. And you were kind of the lead in, in charge of that. You didn't see a, sing, a single thing from that? Are you angry with the NFL? Um, I, I think they're, they're a powerhouse. I think they're, um, they're, they're going to tie things up in court. I, and, and I truly believe they're going to tie things up in court till people die. Would you take it all back? If you could, I mean, would you, if you had a choice to not play knowing what you're dealing with today, what would your decision be? That's a great question. 
I was a young kid that, that loved sports. Um, I was a young kid that wanted an education. Um, I, just, I just happened to be pretty good. And um, I, I don't think I would change it, even if I knew, uh, well, it's interesting. <laughs> I, I would change it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't enjoy um, having to go through the strategies and, and, and the medicine and, and things to uh, just try to live a normal life. I, I don't think I'd do it, Steph. As much as I love sports and I would try something else, I'd become a really good swimmer. I would uh, become a really good tennis player. Um, I would become a, you know, something. I would do something that uh, kept me from 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 the hits, the subconcussive and concussive hits that I took. With that type of reflection, it might surprise you to know that Rippon's daughter, Angela, played football. Following in his footsteps as a quarterback in the lingerie league. Don't let that fool you. These women take hits. What did you say to your daughter, Angela, when she wanted to be a quarterback? I, I, I supported her. Um, and, uh, I, I, she suffered concussions too. She did. And, and it, yeah. And, um, I supported her because I, I feel that daughters and, and of, uh, uncles or, or of, 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 of parents and, um, uh, nieces, uh, of parents who have played the game, um, aspire to be, um, uh, uh to, to follow their dreams. But it makes me sick to, to think that I put her in a situation that would harm her and give her a, but I supported her. In a, Is she doing okay today? Mm, she has, she has her moments. Mm. Yeah, so um, she's, uh, again, um, I, I'm gonna have to tell you, the, the, Mental health has got things. We've we have we've had a falling out for the last uh, year and a half, and um, but up till then she was she was not doing great, mm -hmm. and uh, um, this affects everyone in the family. I was so it it affects a lot of people, and it has affected a lot of people. Um, but I again I want to stress that they're you're not alone out there. When we return, the voice we didn't expect to hear from during this interview and the words that surprised us all. There was a time for about three years where I thought that Mark would be placed in a home. When Mark Rippon, out of the shadows, comes right back. Mark Rippon out of the shadows and addressing a very personal issue that he has kept quiet for years, his battle with mental health. What are these days like for you right now? It's, it's, it's hard to really um, say, you know, I mean, I, people think of me as, as Mark Rippon, the football player. Um, I, I want to know and have people understand, and these people in our community who I'm here to help understand Mark Rippon post-football. I suffer every day. I suffer depression, anxiety, I suffer uh, isolation. Um, I suffer, uh, you know, it's, it's in a social environment, I'm pretty good. I can't wait to get home and, and just be alone. One of the people who has watched the pain of Mark's struggles and his isolation is his wife, Danielle. During this interview, she sat quietly in the background. So we were surprised when she decided to speak. Who are you leaning on today? Uh, I've leaned on my wife. Um, she has been the rock. I've, I've been, I've been going uh, through recovery for number of years, and she's been there to support me throughout the whole journey. And I've been very blessed to have uh, someone that is there. How difficult do you think this is for her? Through some of our most difficult times, she vowed in a, in a dark, dark place where. Her health was at risk. She said, I can't, I can't, I can't leave you. <laughs> I, I can't leave you. I don't want you to be the next Mike Webster. I don't want you to be the 
um, that person. And, and she vowed to stay through some dark, dark times, Steph. Some dark, dark times. I would just like to say that I am so moved to have watched Mark's struggle through some, some very serious, and I believe brain injury related struggles. There was a time for about three years where I thought that Mark would be placed in a home much like where Mike Webster should have been, but someone stood by him. Instead, he died alone. But I thought that's where we were headed, and somehow Mark was able to keep trying and keep asking for help. Mark, have you been able to talk with other family members? Uh, let, let me be honest. One of the things that mental health does is that stigma is intact. It's, you know, it's almost foolproof that you don't talk about it. Right. Um, the isolation, and, and that's why I'm here, the isolation uh, that all these kids are going through and um, the, the, the suicidal thoughts that they're going through and the isolation that they have, that um, no one's going to miss them if, if, if they leave. Right. This is what I'm here for, for that, not only for our community, for my family too, sure. to open up the lines of communication. What I want, Stephanie, is to have my legacy say, I'm going to do whatever I can. Well, coincidentally, before our interview was set up with Mark, we reached out to the Spokane Public Schools to be part of their day-long event that they have going on right now to help prevent suicide. That event is happening as we speak, and we'll check in with Kalai Chalk, who is there in a little bit for perspective from counselors on the front line. Also, coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to be talking to one of the few doctors in our region who's working with former NFL players. He's using a procedure showing promise for concussion treatment. And Sam Adams will be here with a look at how the game has changed since rip and play ball and the NFL's new helmet hit rule. Could it be the answer to helping to protect players from brain injury? Please stay with us here on KHQ and SWX for this special one hour edition of Mark Rippin Out of the Shadows. Welcome back to a special edition of KHQ Local News and to our viewers watching on SWX. Well, tonight we broke away from our normal newscast format following a very personal and painful revelation from a man who many of us have mm. cheered for and many of us have called a friend. That's right. Mark Rippon is a hometown hero. He's a football star. He's a Super Bowl MVP. But Mark Rippon revealed to me in a very emotional and intense interview, mental illness has caused him to go to dark places. In this half hour, exploring mental illness, suicide, how food Football impacts the brain and treatments being developed that could bring new hope to these players and their families. Of course, to get to those topics, though, we have to get to Mark Rippon himself. And we talked openly about his past and what he hopes speaking out will accomplish. Mark Rippon, from football hero to larger than life philanthropist to a man on the brink of losing it all. What are these days like for you right now? Well, I. It's, it's, it's hard to really um, say, you know, I mean, I, people think of me as, as Mark Rippon, the football player. Right. Um, I, I want to know and have people understand, and these people in our community who I'm here to help understand Mark Rippon post-football. Mark Rippon, the football player, is more a memory, a memory that's fading fast. Now, there are two Mark Rippons, the one we see at fundraisers, laughing with friends, joking on air, smiling and jubilant. And then there's the one we don't see the suffering, the heartbreak, the painful ache of losing a child, the rage. There's a lot of things in my life I wish were different. I wish there was a time where I was able to, to think more reasonable. Do you remember that night? No. I, I remembered. I, I don't remember that night, no. I remember losing my losing control is all I do. So it really wasn't Danielle. This is what I'm here for, for that, not only for our community, for my family too. Sure. To open up the lines of communication, to not see Mark as, oh gosh, he's always, you know, every time I see him, he's this fun, loving guy. No, 
No, Mark is, Mark is, has been messed up and, um, he doesn't show that side, you know, and, and they don't want to see that side either, so. For Mark Rippon and his family, sports is life. And life is sports. Mark's cousin played in the NHL. His nephew, Brett Rippon, was also a Shadow Park High School standout and is the starting quarterback for the Boise State Broncos. But it's Mark's daughter who brings him the most pride and the greatest concern. What did you say to your daughter, Angela, when she wanted to be a quarterback? I, I supported her. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I, she suffered concussions too. She did. And, and it, yeah. Angela Rippon was a quarterback in the Lingerie Football League. But don't let the name fool you. They take real hits. So why did Mark support her? I supported her because um, I, I, I feel that daughters and, and of uh, uncles or, or of, 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 of parents and um, nieces uh, of parents who have played the game um, aspire to be uh, uh, to, to follow their dreams. But it wasn't easy. It makes me sick to, to think that I put her in a situation that would harm her and give her a... But I supported her. Is she doing okay today? Mm. She has. She has her moments. Mm. Yeah. So, um, she's, uh... Again, um, I, I'm going to have to tell you the, the mental health has got things. We've we have we've had a falling out for the last uh, year and a half, and um, but up till then she was she was not doing great. It affects a lot of people, and it has affected a lot of people. Um, but I again I want to stress that there you're not alone out there. You are not alone. Easy to say, not so easy to believe. And even harder, when you've built your entire life around something that is destroying you in ways no one could possibly comprehend. I've played 26 years of uh, organized football, junior high, all the way through my, my retirement in the National Football League. I um, suffer uh, from a, a complex stew of mental health conditions, dark places, depression, anxiety, um, addictions. Uh, poor choices, poor decisions, brought about from uh, dozens of concussions and dozens of, and, and thousands of sub-concussive injuries from playing uh, this sport. But there is hope. Is there treatment today that can help reverse any of the damage that you've had? There is, and there's treatment that I'm, I'm uh, currently going to use, and uh, that's TMS. Well, Mark Rippon is part of what is called the NFL Concussion Settlement, a court ruling expected to provide financial relief to retired players living with the lasting scars of an NFL career. Five diseases are outlined in this settlement. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, memory loss, and CTE, a degenerative brain disease which can lead to dementia and impaired impulse judgment. However, right now CTE can only be definitively diagnosed after a person dies using examination of their brain tissue. Well, that could be changing along with treatment for post-traumatic brain injuries. We don't know why it happens to one player and not another. And there certainly are players, boxers, who make it their whole life and never have something like this. But when you see it, you know it's real. Dr. David Greeley is a Spokane neurologist, active in research and development of new technologies to treat severe brain injuries. While CTE can only be diagnosed after a player dies, he's convinced many athletes are living with the consequences while alive. You can see it. It is a uh, physical phenomenon. It's not just people who um, are what used to be called like shell shock or PTSD and people just said, well, they're, they're not tough. And that happened to people in the war and it's certainly happening now in football where it's not everybody and we don't understand why some people get it and some don't. But it's a real disease. It's not simply that they are psychologically frail or they're not tough or, you know, some of the things that are used against the players. There is hope. Hope for diagnosis of CTE while a person is alive and more importantly, hope for treatment through TMS. TMS or transcranial magnetic stimulation is a procedure that's been FDA approved for almost 10 years in this country for depression, but 
studies are coming out uh, more and more all the time of its use in many disease states, including CTE. To use the sports term, this really could be a game changer for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, for, I think, society. I mean, this is a big problem. When you, when you include everyone who's had a mild head injury, uh, it's not just the NFL. When you include the veterans and many of people who've been through wars, uh, have had head injuries and concussive injury from, uh, from shell shock or even injury from a distance. So there are a lot of people experiencing problems from it. I guess what is hard for most people to fathom is that your brain can be controlled in such a way as that you are totally out of control, meaning you, you really have no idea what you're doing. If you've ever been seriously sleepy or drunk or even a panic attack or horribly depressed, I mean, people, people know that situation. And when you lose control, you're not really thinking as clearly as you'd like. You know, the next day you might be back to normal. And these players can move that quickly. It's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They can flip in and out very quickly with very small triggers that they don't understand themselves sometimes. And that's what's scary. They're scared of themselves. That's, I think, what's tough to watch. They're scared of themselves in this situation, and they know that they could do some very dangerous things. And some very, They're scared to be around their nieces and nephews. They're scared to be around the public. They're scared for their re reputation, and their own health actually is way down the list. Most of them would actually go back and play football again if they had a chance. Well, Mark Rippon says he plans to receive treatment from Dr. Greeley using the TMS method. It involves almost daily treatments over some six weeks. We've been invited to follow his progress. We also want to be transparent. Cole's company, which owns KHQ, has invested in a Colorado company that also does this kind of therapy. And although Dr. Greeley has worked with them in, that, in the past, he is no longer affiliated with that group.